fucking eat. oxygen to make you more comfortable. I'm going to be doing a bit of an assessment on you. Does that sound okay to you? Yep. All right. Perfect. Now, before we begin, I am going to pull this privacy curtain. All right. There we go. So let's start out. Do you have any history of lung issues in your family or personally? No. No. Um, any asthma growing up as a kid? No. Okay. Are you on any inhalers or medication that affect your breathing? Mm -hmm. No. All right. And do you have any tightness in your chest or shortness of breath mm -hmm. that you notice? No? All right. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good. So um, I am going to just take a listen to your lungs if that's all right. <coughs> so if you could just take a deep breath for me. And out. In and out, in and out, and we're going to go over the other side, in and out. Okay, so normally if she wasn't already propped up, I would make sure that the patient is elevated, but in this case she is elevated. Ideally, I would probably elevate them a little bit better in a more comfortable position, but because she's on the couch, this is what we're dealing with. Um, also, I would make sure to listen to um, the lungs from the back or posterior side of them as well as the anterior in front of them. Um, and then, so from there, I'm going to get a pulse ox reading. So with this, since she has her fingernails painted, um, in a real setting, you would sometimes have to have the patient remove their nail polish if you couldn't get a reading. And also, when you do this, you want to make sure you're not using the thumb and you're not using um, any finger that has a wound or has any edema in it. So, let me just use this index finger. And I'm going to just leave that on. You can just relax your hand there. All right, so we're going to say that her oxygen level is a little low and that it's at 89. Ideally, you want the oxygen to be above 95, and we're going to say that her pulse is 88. Um, so we are going to start you on some oxygen. I am just going to put a nasal cannula though to start since that is the least invasive way. Um, and with those, we can put you on oxygen anywhere from one liter all the way up to six liters. I'm just going to take this off so it's not in the way. So to begin, I would make sure that I have um, everything set up in the wall and we're gonna pretend that we do. And we're gonna check the airflow to make sure that's set too. And you wanna make sure that the ball is lined up with the line and that may mean getting eye level because sometimes you can get an uh, inaccurate reading if you're just looking at it from above. Um, so I'm gonna say I'm gonna put on two liters of oxygen. So we're gonna say I check the airflow and then I'm gonna take the tube of the nasal cannula, I'll plug it into there, the airflow, and I'm going to then um, make sure that the oxygen is flowing through the nasal cannula, and we're going to say it is. Now, when I go to put this into my patient, ideally if I had a real nasal cannula, you would be able to see that there are two prongs that go inside the nose. So, you want the prongs curving towards the patient in order for them to get the um, best oxygen flow because if they're pointing away from the patient when you put them in, it's really just being counterproductive at that point. And when you put this in, 
you're going to put it on around there or in their nose, making sure those prongs are pointed towards them. You're going to loop it around their ears, and then you're just going to adjust the tightness of the nasal cannula. And then from there, you let them relax a little bit, see how they adjust to that, and then we're going to come back and reassess. So I come back, I reassess. Um, normally, I would be putting them on a simple mask next, which that is um, five to eight liters of oxygen per minute. And then I would make sure when I place that on them, I would do from chin to, or from nose to chin, sorry, um, making sure they have a nice tight seal on that. And then from there, I would, so sorry, go from the, I would go to the partial rebreather, um, but we're just skipping over those and making sure with each step of oxygen and the more invasive you get that you're doing your assessment again. So we started nasal cannula, the least invasive. We're working our way up. We're going to say we did the simple max, the partial rebreather, and now we're to the non rebreather, <coughs> the most intense or invasive form of treatment um, that happens before you have to innovate a person. So while you get that set up, you want to make sure you leave them on the oxygen because you don't want to take them off and have them nothing, on nothing, especially if their oxygen levels are low to begin with. So we're going to say that we took her, we did the assessment again, we took her pulse again, and we're going to say that if it's actually lower, her oxygen is now 88% and her pulse is at 82%, which, you know, that's a high pulse for a healthy person and that's a really low oxygen level for a person as well. So from there, I set everything up for my non rebreather I get my non rebreather mask and um, I'm going to plug it into the wall. I'm going to turn it up to, I'm going to turn the airflow up to 15 liters per minute and I'm going to, um, and I'm going to make sure that this flat bag is inflated before I remove the oxygen that they're on and put it on the patient. So, this bag's inflated. We're looking good. I'm going to take the nasal cannula off. And then I'm going to put the partial or the non rebreather on. And this bag. Is inflated and you want to make sure that when they have the non rebreather on that they are um, that the bag staying inflated if it does deflate you want to make sure that you turn that oxygen up a little bit and uh, inflate it again so we have that and that concludes our um, oxygen treatment portion We can take this off now. Now for this next part. All right, so um, next I'm gonna go over with you how to use an incentive spirometer. Have you ever used one before? No. All right, so this is a little contraption um, that we use in the hospital and we encourage you to use it when you're at home as well. Um, it helps to make sure your lungs are still circulating in the air and they're not just staying stagnant. Um, it basically is exercise for your lungs, uh, really working on your breathing in, breathing out, and it helps build up your lungs and keep that muscle working strong. So, um, well, all the muscles that are associated with that. Um, so here you're going to see that I had already set it to a thousand this is going to be your target volume um and then this little ball here this is what we call the or sometimes it's a ball other times it's um kind of looks like an accordion type of deal and um this is that view and basically what we're going to have you do is we're going to have you take 
a deep breath to begin. And whenever you inhale, we're gonna have you shoot for this target volume of a thousand. And right here, this is the where you want to keep your airflow. So if you go too low or too or too fast or too slow, then you'll be out of these ranges. You want to have a nice speed when you're doing this. So if you want, you can you take a deep breath for me in and out. So I'm going to give you this mouthpiece, and you're going to just seal your mouth around it, and you're going to inhale. And so we reach 1,000, inhale, inhale, inhale. You're gonna hold it for two to six seconds. So one, two, three, four. We'll say you can exhale. And you stay, you reach that target volume and you stayed in between the flow. So that was good. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. Now we'd like you to do this um, about 10 times every hour or every other hour just really like i said make sure we're exercising those lungs and keeping all those muscles involved in your breathing working all right do you have any questions no all right well thank you then i'm going to leave that here for you to do throughout the day